So, Sleepy Hollow, it just got real. Nice to see my little intro actually worked this time. But what is up everyone, my name is Jacob Jones, and welcome to my channel, welcome to this review of Sleepy Hollow Episode 4, and boy, what an episode we had this week. Uh, like I said in the intro, things are getting real, and boy, are things getting real really fast. So, I'm going to go ahead and put it out there, uh, this is obviously the best episode of the season so far. Um, a lot of stuff has come to light. We finally learned some names of some people that we kind of needed to know about. And I'm going to stop putting this off. Let's get right into the review. So, episode four begins with Ichabod Crane in... The seven, we're back, we're doing the flashback to the, uh, the 1700s, and it, and it goes back to the time of the Boston Tea Party, which is probably the, one of the biggest events in American history. And we learned that Ichabod Crane has basically set up the Boston Tea Party because he and the rep, or the rebels, the, uh, the Americans are looking for uh, something that we don't know what it is just yet. So, we, fl we flash forward back to... 2013, and we literally pick up right where we left off of the last episode where Abby's sister Jenny breaks out of the mental hospital. And now, basically, it's a search to go find her. Well, before we find her, we actually do find Jenny, but she's in a bar, and she happens to know the bartender because she asks for something that the bartender has. So he gives her a bag, and she walks out, and then the next scene shows these group of dudes that come in, and the group of dudes basically they question, you know, where can they find Jenny? And well, in typical bad boy fashion, they end up killing off the bartender. And so that sets it up for the episode. We're going on a big hunt. Ichabod and Abby are trying to find Jenny. These dudes we don't know just yet are trying to find Jenny. So really, this is an all-out scramble to find her for to find her first. So Abby and Ichabod start. Uh, bouncing around to these foster homes that um, Jenny has been known to be associated with. And they come across this one where this woman has just been neglecting this child to the point where Abby just absolutely like just goes off on her. But they end up diverging um, the location as to where uh, Jenny might be. And lo and behold, they go to this cottage and they find Jenny there. But what they also find out is, is that Jenny actually knew Sheriff Corbin. Now, if you don't know who Sheriff Corbin is, Sheriff Corbin was... Abby's uh, mentor, so to speak. He's the one really who pulled her out of a life of just doing wrong, just messing up her life, and he brought her into the into the workforce, and she basically became his protege. And when they find out that um, Jenny actually knew Sheriff Corbin, one of the greatest, most hilarious lines from Igbo Crane I've heard the entire time, he looks at the two and he says, well, this is awkward. That was easily like one of the funniest moments of the entire episode, just because like you had Ichabod Crane who's using this modern day thing, like, oh, well, this is awkward, and he uses it, and it was great. I, I was laughing at it. I thought it was easily the funniest moment in the show. So, after the uh, comedic moments are set aside, we actually uh, find out that um, Jenny was actually sent to be looking for something, and Ichabod then reveals that he's actually looking for something. He's looking for this chest, and it was a weapon. And this weapon uh, was said to be able to change the tide of the Revolutionary War to the Brit side. And I guess something I should have mentioned, like in the flashback to the 1700s, there's a guy, there's a, a redcoat who actually, who's actually guarding the chest that they're looking to find, and he basically blows himself up, and Ichabod's the only guy who survives it. Gee, what a shock. But anyway, so... They end up finding this, uh, this sextant, which if you don't know what, it was basically a navigation tool that sailors used. And, and encoded in the sextant is actually a map, and it points to the location of this chest. Well, right as they're about to you know, have a big revelation, the same dudes who were after Jenny uh, basically just start shooting up the place with automatic weapons. There's like uh, three or four dudes, and Abby and Ichabod and Jenny are unprepared for the assault that's coming. And so they actually break in, they steal the map, and they end up, uh, Abby ends up stopping one of the members. And so after questioning, they find out that he is actually a Hessian. Now, the Hessians are the guys who are fighting for the side of evil. And they were fight, and they have links to the Headless Horseman, because the Headless Horseman has uh, the Hessian symbol on the back of his head. 
And so the Hessians are this dark, this group, this unknown group of uh, people who practice black magic. They're in it for the sole purpose of evil. And come to find out, they've actually gotten what um, Ginny and Abby believe to be the Lesser Key of Solomon, which, if you don't know what the Lesser Key of Solomon is, um, the best way to describe it is basically what some consider to be the most demented grimoire out there. Um, it has references to the 72 demons and the... Hessian that the capture says it's basically a portal to the seventh gate of hell or the seventh circle of hell my bad and So the end of the episode has our heroes going to See if they can stop them from opening up the seventh circle. They end up doing that and that was pretty much the episode But we did learn one important thing. We did learn what The name of the demon is that Abby and Jenny saw it turns out his name is Moloch and Now that we know you know more about this demon we're probably going to learn more as to why he fits and ties into the thing and here, here's something weird have y'all like if anyone's been watching the show have you noticed that the headless horseman hasn't been in there since the first episode i mean that, that was just kind of weird to me like they had him in the first episode which was cool and all but then he hasn't been around since which is kind of weird because you know if he's the horseman death i'm guess i mean i guess i'm, I'm guessing they're just waiting to um have the other horsemen around i guess but supposedly, that's what Moloch is for. Moloch is meant to determine, or meant to determine, I'm sorry, is meant to call upon the four horsemen so that way the apocalypse can begin. And there was actually a very interesting little uh, trade-off between uh, the two sisters, Abby and Jenny, at the end, where they started talking about how Abby is, a poten is one of the two potential witnesses um, in the book of Revelation and how they will prophesy for... Oh, I had this number off the top of my head, and I don't remember it. Ah, 1,260 days, that's what it was. Had to get out the old uh, good book here to figure out how many days it was. But essentially, what this basically means is that we're basically leading up to, um, and where I think they're headed with the show, they're actually headed towards the apocalypse now. And basically, Abby and Ichabod are basically representing the forces of good versus the uh, forces of evil. So basically what they're going to try and do is they're going to try and stop as many evil forces as they can because whenever the battle for good and evil starts playing out, well, obviously you want the forces of good to win. I mean, not unless you're evil, which if that's you, hey, we love you anyway. So, um, I'm loving the show. Ab absolutely, 100%. I'm officially addicted to this show. Uh, four episodes in and already we're getting, you know, cranked up. Everything's getting, you know, ready, good to go. Um... I really don't see any foreseeable problems with it. The only uh, two things that kind of been nitpicking at me is number one, we haven't seen the Horseman a lot, the Horseman of Death, and like he was in the first episode, but we haven't seen him since. And the second thing is, is that uh, the guy, the uh, uh, the one sheriff, the one guy who got his head snapped backwards, Harold from Harold and Kumar, that's who it is. Um, he came back in the second episode, and we found out he actually works for Moloch, and. We haven't seen him. Like, where, did, did he just disappear? I, I mean, I don't know where he went. And so, those are really the only two, like, faults I find with it. Some of, some of the dialogue is kind of cheesy in a way, but it's not enough to actually, like, hurt the show in any way. And I actually, uh, someone actually commented on my last episode review and said that it just got renewed for a second season, which I am psyched about. I knew they weren't going to get this whole story done in one season, and... When you, when you do that to a show, whenever you just, like, completely, like, just cut it off when you're not even finished with the story, that kind of really hurts the show, especially, you know, a pretty good show like this. I mean, I've seen, I've, I've talked to some people recently, and they said that this, this may be one of their uh, new favorite shows on TV so far, and which it's definitely one of mine. I'm enjoying it. Um, no faults I can find, but that's just my opinion, and... Some of y'all may have a different opinion, so I'll tell you what. In the comments section below, just um, leave your opinion on what you on what you think of the show. Um, do you like the show so far? Um, do you not like it? What do you feel you know could be different about the show? And as always, um, if you like the video, leave me some feedback. Let me know if I need to change anything. Um, be sure to uh, give it a thumbs up if you like it. Um, you can even subscribe if you want to. I think I may have finally have a direction as to where I'm heading with this channel. But that is it and um until next time i see you guys on youtube um y'all be safe 
and I'll see y'all next time.